Hello everyone, it is wonderful to be with you all. My name is Penilla Charrington and I'm married to Robin Adder and we have five children. It's a pleasure to have you joining myself and Professor Grenville Hancock's MBE this evening for the first of the virtual Silver Screen Talks. Grenville and I first met at St Wilfrid's residential home in 2013. I was facilitating with the Dance of Parkinson's classes held at St Wilfrid's when Fiona Costa kindly invited Grenville to host a workshop. Grenville then founded Skylark's Pimlico and I became a member and I'm currently facilitating with Skylark's Sing to Beat Parkinson's. I will now talk to you a little bit about my vocational dance training at London Contemporary Dance School and my professional career as a dance artist and a dance teaching artist. It all began in 1977 when I was accepted to London Contemporary Dance School. My audition included many renowned artists within the dance world, to mention just a few, Sir Robert Cohan, Robin Howard CBE, Jane Dudley, and Nina Foneroff. I'm going to share a few photographs with you, and I'm going to continue my talk and my journey through from London Contemporary. So I'm just going to share the first photograph with you. I'm going to go back from that just one second. I'm now going to go for the beginning of the photographs that I'm going to share with you. That is the last one. And we all started here. This is a picture of myself at the Place Theatre. I was performing a piece that was choreographed for me for my graduation performance. The Place Theatre is at London Contemporary Dance School. It is part of the building and the home for London Contemporary Dance Theatre that was. The next slide is Sir Robert Cohan, who I just mentioned to you. Bob, Robert Cohan, as we've always called him Bob, very sadly has recently passed away. I thought you might be interested to know a little bit about Robert Cohan. He was the founding artistic director of the place, was a prolific choreographer, an utterly brilliant teacher, and also a strategist. Single-handedly, he changed the face of contemporary dance in this country. Well, perhaps not quite single-handedly, for it was Robin Howard, founder of the Contemporary Dance Trust, who had the vision to invite Cohan to lead his new organization, comprising a company, a school, a building, which was to be known as The Place. Cohan bravely took up the invitation and contemporary dance in Britain was born. I mentioned Sir Robin and I also mentioned Robin Howard CBE. Here is a picture of Robin on the right and on the left. I'll fill you in a little bit. Robin Howard became involved in modern dance after seeing a performance by Martha Graham Dance Company in London in 1954. A ballet fan, Mr. Howard, who lost both his legs in World War II, once said he had been drawn to that art partly because it was a total contrast to warfare. But Miss Graham bowled me over and changed my life. He recalled, all my life I will be in Martha's debt. The next slide I'm showing you is myself dancing in the Robert Cohan studio. And this is a particular Martha Graham technique class of which we are doing stag leaps that are going from one end of the studio to the other. And it is all part of the Martha Graham technique class. The picture on the other side is a rehearsal of Starbuck Martyr, the choreography by Robert Cohan. This piece I particularly loved doing and I loved learning it. The music was by Antonio Vivaldi, as I said, choreographed by Robert Cohan. And it is the picture of the mother sorrowing, stood weeping near the cross while her son was hanging. Robert Cohan said in a program note that all the women represent parts of Mary's experience rather than being attendants to her. Here you have a picture of Sir Richard Alston, CBE. Richard was recently the artistic director of the place and Richard Alston Dance Company. 
Richard has worked throughout the UK and Europe as an independent choreographer and teacher. Many of you will have joined me at Sadler's Wells to see Richard Alston Dance Company perform many of Richard's beautiful works. The picture on, my, on the left is Dumka. That again was performed at the Place Theatre and choreographed by Richard Alston. It's actually me in that picture. And then I joined English Dance Theatre. Artistic director, Dr. Ross McKim, who danced with the Royal Danish Ballet, the National Ballet of Canada and London Contemporary Dance Theatre. Ross founded Moving Visions in 1976. It was later known as English Dance Theatre. I joined the company in 1980 after graduating from London Contemporary Dance School. Ross had a vision of a cathedral tour. We traveled throughout every cathedral in England with a beautiful program of dances that were choreographed by Ross and others. It was a very wonderful and successful tour that we did and a pleasure to have been part of it. Then things change a little bit. It's got a little bit more on that I was going to tell you. Before I come to this slide, I'm just gonna go back to that one. I've got to mention the opportunity of working with Robert North, who danced at London Contemporary Dance Theatre in 1967. Robert later came and choreographed for English Dance Theatre, and it was by kind permission that Robert was appointed Artistic Director of Ballet Rombert in 1981, that I was fortunate to have an apprenticeship with Ballet Rombert. After that, I traveled to Toronto, and for over a year, I continue, continue training and developing my professional work with Toronto Dance Theatre. Then I came back to London and I met somebody called Jackie Genova. Things were really changing now. When I returned, I was approached by Jackie, an Australian model who had trained with Jane Fonda at the time when aerobics was the fashionable way to exercise. We opened classes throughout London and we were invited by Sir Michael Parkinson, CBE, to give regular Saturday morning classes on TVAM. This was a very different side to my dance career and a very enjoyable and an interesting time. I then started and formed the School of Creative Dance with my previous dance teacher, Peggy Hawkins. The picture on your left you'll see is Peggy at the piano and Peggy was a dancer and musician and trained with Mary Rombert. Peggy was my dance teacher at school and was my mentor behind my dance career as a teacher for young children. It was during this time that Peggy and I met up again and we founded the School of Creative Dance, teaching young children dance for over 12 years. It is in Peggy's memory that the place and the Peggy Hawkins Scholarship Fund is held at London Contemporary Dance School, The Place. It was founded by myself and Peggy and her son, Anthony Van Last. Many of you will remember meeting Anthony for his talks and workshops at Hurlingham in honor of the Peggy Hawkins Scholarship Fund. Anthony is a renowned choreographer for film and theater. You will, I'm sure, have seen Mamma Mia 1 and 2, Beauty and the Beast, and Tina the Musical, just to mention a few of Anthony's amazing productions. The last slide I'm going to share with you about the place in London Contemporary Dance School is the building. The building is on the left and it stands today as it is. At the back of the building, it is extended to create more beautiful lit and glass studios. The picture on the right is myself with some of the Peggy Hawkins Scholarship Fund scholars that were receiving their certificates for their tribute to dance and how much they have achieved and for their excellence. Now, Dance for Parkinson's, which is very close to my heart. The picture on one side is with English National Ballet. I started training with English National Ballet and we produced regular classes for people with Parkinson's at the home of English National Ballet in Markova Place. I then continued my experience through English National Ballet 
with Dancing with Parkinson's, formerly known as Musical Moving. I think on the website, I believe the Musical Moving video is actually there for you for your interest. Parkinson's helps people nurture and active lifestyle. Dancing with Parkinson's is not just physical for them, but it is also socially for them. It helps people with Parkinson's nurture an active lifestyle, not just physically, but also socially, as I've just mentioned. It's a good and challenging mental workout for people with Parkinson's and allows some participants to cope better with symptoms and disability. In an active, in an activity that encourages a sense of feeling good about themselves and feeling of being more capable despite worsening symptoms. It helps them keep motivated and it improves all aspects of their daily life and the pleasure of the music and movement is hugely beneficial for people with Parkinson's. And this is a section of my work at the moment that is of great pleasure to me. I'm now going to just tell you where I am now. I'm going to stop this time sharing the screen share and just explain a little bit where I am now. I'm now teaching Dance for Parkinson's with Joanne Duff and Dancing with Parkinson's formerly Musical Moving. You will have hopefully seen the link of a short film that I've just mentioned. And I'm now to round it all up. I have had a wonderful career in dance, which later brought me to teaching dance to autistic children and with combining my work with Magpie Dance, which is an inclusive dance company. I trained under Alan Herdman Pilates, and this has brought an additional support to my work. I'm now focusing on teaching ballet and music and movement at the Hurlingham Club. Many of you, I believe, have attended our classes. Music and movement for people in residential care and at Battersea Place, Chelsea Court Place and Heritage Care. Thank you all very much for listening and I will now hand you over to my friend and colleague, Professor Grenville Hancox. Thank you, Grenville. Hi, good evening everybody. It's really lovely to um, join you in this meeting and to second what Penella has just described as the amazing impact of, of dance and music for all of us, but especially when one is uh, suffering or experiencing difficulties in life through health or well-being issues. So my career has been a long one um, and has always been actually focused on using music as a means of strengthening our community, the individual focused for a social engagement in some way through what I call the modulation of sound. And I've been on that journey since an experience I had as a young teenager playing in a youth orchestra, which my place had been gained with, by the fact that my county authority offered me free instrumental tuition. My parents couldn't uh, possibly have afforded either the instrument or the tuition, as is required mostly nowadays. And this youth orchestra, which was directed by an extraordinary lady called Maud Smith, who'd, who'd studied with Ralph Vaughan Williams at the Royal College of Music. She took us to Germany in 1967, but not just to Germany, she took us to East Berlin. And that extraordinary experience of playing music and allowing me to with my colleagues in the orchestra to go across the, that divide, the city, across the wall into a culture that was otherwise um, foreign to us in every respect was a profound experience. And that, from that moment on, I decided that music had to be in some way a large part of my life. And so it's been always using music as a means of of engaging with community and, and trying in some way to change life as we know it 
right now and how we hope it might be tomorrow. So teaching was in exactly the, the way that I could do this. Teaching music in secondary school, then a, then a very exciting uh, comprehensive school in Shropshire, which was way ahead of its time in all sorts of ways. And then seconded to York University and then following that, actually being appointed as a lecturer at a, a teacher training college in Canterbury, which then became a university and eventually becoming a professor of music in the year 2000. All that time, I wanted to be using music through learning and applying the skills that we can acquire, regardless of our background, regardless of our experiences and regardless of our culture, in such a way that we can change the world in some aspect. And so lots of students came to study with me <clears throat> and my colleagues in Canterbury, many of whom now are actually on the world stage uh, as opera singers, as jazz pianists, as teachers, as educators, as medics, applying their skills in all sorts of different ways. And during this time, I worked closely with a fellow colleague, academic, Stephen Clift, who was professor of public health. And we started to investigate the impact of singing on people. Uh, when we choose to sing in a group, what are the effects that happen? What happens to us? What happens to us mentally, socially, physically? And so in 2001, 20 years ago exactly, we published a paper which is called The Perceived Benefits of Singing. And that became a plank for many constructive engagements with research and practice to investigate further what's happening when we sing together in a group. And like Penilla just uh, uh, described the impact of, of dance with Parkinson's, that it's not only physical, but it's mental and it's also social. Those were three of the, the aspects that we were really concerned with, with singing together. And as a result of that paper, and the interest that was shown by lots of people, we, we decided that we would need a research centre. And, and Sir Roger de Haan, Roger de Haan as he was then, but Sir Roger de Haan, we approached, and he very generously sponsored and funded a, a major piece of research. And we established the Sydney de Haan Research Centre for Arts and Health, which was originally in Folkestone from where I'm speaking right now, and uh, is now centered in, in Canterbury Christchurch University. This research center took forward the work that we'd started and investigated the impact of singing in all sorts of settings. We did a major study with international choirs in Australia, in Germany and in England. <clears throat> and our original findings were replicated in that very large study. We then started to look at the impact of singing with people with mental health issues. Of course, you know, it's commonplace now. We're much more aware of mental health uh, in our society and its importance that we look after mental health. But in the, in the late 80s, early 90s, not so, not such the case. And so very important work first randomized trial control concerned with singing and mental health. And, and then we also started to look at the impact of singing with breathing, with COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And in 2010, I started to develop an interest in singing with Parkinson's, people with Parkinson's, and established this group that, that uh, Penilla has just referred to, the Skylark Singers. It was with a, a former colleague who developed Parkinson's and it was his name, Skylark, was given the idea of through singing they gain some sort of freedom from the constraints that this extraordinary condition uh, puts upon people. You don't die from Parkinson's, you die with it and it, it is a very debilitating condition in all sorts of ways because it 
it, it manifests itself in a whole variety. Every individual has different uh, condition, really. So it's a very difficult condition to live with. And coming together for a couple of hours um, every week or every fortnight to sing actually literally allowed people to sort of lose themselves for a while. And we were able to develop also the idea that singing is much more than just making sound. It's about a complete and total engagement mentally and physically uh, in that way. So movement becomes more, more important. And as Panilla has said, that's where we came together in 2013 when I started a, this group that became Pimlico Skylarks for people with Parkinson's. And so it's gone on. And now we have an organization that's under a charity that I established in 2012 called Sing to Beat, Sing to Beat Parkinson's, or right now Sing to Beat COVID as another uh, aspect of our, our work. And there's something like 30 groups now uh, that are under the umbrella of my charity where we're trying to use, oh, we're not trying, we are using singing as a means of alleviating some of the issues that are faced by people with Parkinson's. And so it's a great pleasure that each week now, through the medium of this virtual connection that we have through Zoom and other platforms, we're able to meet groups of people on a weekly basis. And the testimonies suggest that, in fact, this has been very important since last March, since the first lockdown, allowing people to come together to enjoy amazingly this social aspect of coming together to sing and now added further to by Panilla's attendance and having us dance and move at the same time as we sing, which has been a revelation. So here we are. This is the work that we are involved in. It's, a, it's an amazing privilege to work alongside Panilla and also to have this opportunity to tell you about our work. And I hope we can actually enjoy something together right now. Thank you. Thank you, Grenville. That was absolutely wonderful. Thank you very, very much. I hope you can all hear me, everyone. Can you hear me? I hope so. All good? Fantastic. I'd like to personally thank Professor Grenville Hancock's MBE with all my heart for such a wonderful, wonderful talk. As I mentioned earlier, my work with Sing to Beat Parkinson's is a wonderful journey to share and to express how dance and singing can make us all feel better. You can access the links for Sing to Beat Parkinson's and Dancing with Parkinson's at the Hurlingham Club website, the Silver Screen Virtual Talks, and it will be there for you for your interest. Thank you from my heart as well to everyone that has contributed to this evening's Silver Screen event. Thank you to Janie, Rosie, Terry and all the team. Thank you to Grenville, who will now lead us with some wonderful singing, and you are all invited to sing with us. I hope you will enjoy this, and thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Over to you, Grenville. Okay, thank you very much. Well, this is very strange, isn't it? Because we're going to try to involve us all in singing when we're not together. So just following on from what I've been talking about, the great... Uh, privilege it, that we, exists for us as human beings about coming together to sing has of course been rudely interrupted for over a year now through the through COVID and uh, I, I saw somebody asking a question earlier on yeah what have we been doing why when COVID doesn't allow us to sing together well we've used this marvelous platform of Zoom to try to recreate the social aspects of singing together by having the screen in front of us and seeing everybody that's there or and at the same time being being led by myself or some one of my other colleagues in encouraging people to sing in their homes 
So what's it all about? Well, I'm, I'm concerned with, especially with the condition of Parkinson's, where we go from the speaking voice to the singing voice. So we go from speaking to singing, one. Secondly, I'm concerned with the idea of stimulating the neural pathways through very simple exercises, which are neither condescending, but are, are fun. So con no condescension, but great fun. And third thing then is actually about using, moving from the speaking voice to the singing voice so that we start to exercise literally the vocal cords. Now, everybody's Parkinson's condition is different, but uh, one of the things that's quite common is that the, the messages don't get to the vocal muscles. And so speaking becomes very difficult. Imagine then if you're communicating and your voice is actually becoming quieter and quieter, then one's personality is somehow dented. Our voices are our, are our barometers to, to the world. And so when you pick up the phone, you know how people are feeling when, as soon as you hear the voice, don't you? So we have to, we have to be concerned with vocal strength and improving voice. So those three things then, going from the speaking voice to the singing voice. Secondly, moving and rhythmic exercises that are to do with the both mental and, and physical aspects. And third thing then, attention to the, the, the muscles of the, the voice itself. So what I'd like you to do right now is just actually settle yourselves in either sitting down so that you move your back away from the from from the chair from the if you're sitting in a chair just try to have your back supporting you yourself so that yep you're there there just put your hand on your tummy just put your hand on your tummy and i want you to go ha like that <laughs> go on <laughs> brilliant let's do it again go 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 ha <laughs> Right, good. I want you to go ha ha like that because we're going to go ha 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 like that. Okay, try that. Ha ha. Very good. Okay, let's go now and just do a laugh. So we're going to do. <laughs> try it. Laugh. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Now, you see, just looking around the screens now, I can see even through Zoom that laughter is infectious. Yes, that when we laugh, we actually change in some sort of way. But we're doing very important things. We're actually, my, your hand on your tummy is actually on your diaphragm. So we're aware of our diaphragmatic muscles. And when we go, ha, huh, like that, you can feel your muscles working. Ha, huh, ha, huh, like that. Yeah. Okay, very good. So bravo. So now we're just going to say bravo. Okay. Let's say it. I want to hear you say bravo. Yes. Okay. And I want to see your mouths move. So we go bravo. Mm -hmm. Bravo. Yes, thank you very much, whoever that was. <laughs> that was fantastic. Okay, this time I want you to say bravo and throw your arms into the air. So watch me, I go bravo. Bravo. Yes, very good. <laughs> Whoever that is, that's fantastic. Let's do it again. Go, 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 go. Bravo! Bravo! Yes, fantastic. Well done. Okay. Right, now when we say bravo, you can hear that you've got to roll your rars with your tongue. Say bravo. Now, for some people that's difficult anyway, but with, with Parkinson's often that's actually quite difficult. So bravo. So... We do a little exercise now. I want you to say rhubarb. Rhubarb. Thank you. I want you to say red rhubarb. <laughs> red rhubarb. <laughs> Very good. I want you to say really red rhubarb. Really red rhubarb. Lovely. Okay. Really red righteous rhubarb. <laughs> <laughs> a really red righteous rhubarb. <laughs> Very good. Okay, one more. Really red righteous Renaissance rhubarb. Really a 
red righteous renaissance rhubarb. Very good. But I say bravo, bravo, bravo. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Okay. So what we're doing there, look, we're actually just losing ourselves slightly. It's very difficult to think of other things when you're being challenged with something as silly like a really red rhubarb, righteous, very nice, or rhubarb, whatever it is. Your mind is occupied. So the neural pathways are being really exercised, really exercised in that way. Next thing we're going to go on to then is this idea of rhythm. So hear what I say? Rhythm. Okay. We're going to be rhythmic rhythmic and we're going to be rhythmic with the alphabet now i have a preservation society it's called the alphabet preservation society a p s alphabet preservation society and the alphabet preservation society is trying to make sure that every letter is as important as the next letter in the alphabet why should d be any less important than c why should F be any less important than A? No reason. So we have to say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Okay? Can you just say that? Here we go. And go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U B W X Y Z. Very good. Bravo. So now we're just going to put a little bit more rhythm. We're going to go A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U B W X Y Z. Okay, let's try that and go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, D, U, B, W, X, Y, Z. Very good. Now I can see you in your seats. Why not just do this? Just try this then, because what we're going to do is actually extend this idea of rhythm and pulse. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, D, U, B, W, X, Y, Z. Okay, so let me hear you a bit louder. All right, nice sip of air before you start so that you feel breathing through your nose and hold it a little bit. Okay, just, let's just try that. Let's just go breathe in a little bit and then just expand, express the air, go Good, again, breathe in and very good. Okay, so the alphabet, one, two, three, Four. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, D, U, B, W, X, Y, Z. Yes, very good. Now, here's a little exercise. We're going to go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, B, W, X, Y, Z. Where do we clap? We clapped on A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N O P Q R S T U B W X Y Z. Okay, G after M, U after Z. So let's try it. Here we go. One, two, three, four. A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U B W X Y Z. You've been practicing. Let's do it again. One, two. Three, four, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, D, U, B, W, X, Y, Z. Oh, bravo. A little round of applause. This is a round of applause. Look, you can get a round of applause, a round of applause. So you're applauding everybody else. Fantastic. Okay. Now, we're going to go from the speaking voice then to the singing voice. So instead of going A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, we're going to go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. 
Do you know that? It's a, we, we're doing an octave. We're doing eight notes. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. And top to the bottom. That's eight notes we're doing there. So let's, let's try that. A, B, C. Now let's just practice that. Put your hand back on your diaphragm, on your tummy. And left arm out. A little bit. Left arm out. I'm just going to ABC like an opera singer. So you're on the stage of the English National Opera. You're going to go ABC like that. Try it. Go, 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 go. ABC. Yes, good. And hold it on. Just try holding on. So feel your air enter your diaphragm. So that nice breathing in. Hold it and then ABC. Here we go. A, B, C. Very good. Bravo. Okay, so we come down, descend, A, B, C, D, E, F, and that octave. Here we go, and go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, D, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Very good. Now, when we work together, Panilla and I, when we're doing a singing session like this, Panilla asks the Parkinson's group just to do very simple exercises seated, which actually fit in with the songs that we're singing. So this is a song, all it is is an alphabet song with a descending octave. But I'm going to ask Panilla to get us to do a very simple seated exercise at the same time. So Panilla, what are you going to ask us to do? What are we going to do? I think what would be good is you lift up one hand for A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Ah. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, good. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, lovely. What now if we go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, we do our octave. What should we do to that? Lovely. For like a little bit faster, we'll go tap and a tap and a tap and a tap. Now I'm actually lifting my knees up a little bit. I don't know if you can see my knees. Now you can. So we'll just do a tap and a tap and a tap and a tap. And as it goes in tempo there, then we can go back to where we were. Great. Okay, okay. let's try that. Here we go. One, two, three. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, B, W, X, Y, Z. Once again, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, B, W, X, Y, Z. And the last time, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Bravo. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, you're seeing the, the way that we're developing, going from the speaking voice to the singing voice, a, re, a, <clears throat> a, restricted, a restricted dynamic of a, um, sorry, a restricted pitch of an octave, using a little a game idea of alphabet to prompt the memory, to prompt rhythm and pulse, to understand what a pulse is. That's an underlying feeling of the, the measured beat that's going on. And over the top of that, putting some sort of rhythm that goes over that at the same time, which is like doing this, basically but we're doing it in sound, yeah? So when we're singing, the things that I've asked you all to do now are all about this. So neurologically then, we're actually stimulating, stimulating the brain in, in very, very, very many ways. Uh, one of the 
uh, profound experiences I had when I was teaching in university was that one of my students was a pharmacist. She was a mature student who had been a pharmacist. pharmacist. And she'd, she suffered, though, from obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. And that meant that she had to give up pharmacy because she couldn't remember whether she'd written three tablets four times a day or 40 tablets three times a day. And so she started to go and visit all her, her clients, her patients, her, her customers and, and say, you know, look, have I given you the right prescription? So she had to leave pharmacy. She did music. She was a fine musician. And she said to me one day, she said, Eureka. I realized the only time that I'm without my OCD is on a Tuesday evening when I'm singing with my choir. The only time. And that's because, just like we're doing now, her brain waves, everything, all the activity going on in her brain was such that she could actually just push other things out. Yeah. So this is rather like we were suggesting earlier in the talk and the impact of singing for people with Parkinson's is, is quite profound, can be very good. And also um, that we started to exercise our, our vocal muscles. So if we want to sing then together, then we, we don't necessarily then <clears throat> need uh, words to sing as we, we just use letters in the Alphabet Preservation Society tune. And now I'm going to ask you to la. This is a very famous tune that has very difficult words. They're all called la words. It goes like this. Can you hear that? Can you hear my guitar? Yeah. Penilla, can you hear my guitar? Yeah. It goes. La 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 very good now you're singing really well i can i can hear you i can hear you now i want you to sing the the green sleeves idea with expression okay so instead of um just singing la i want you to think about something like oh you know my husband or my partner my partner's not pay the electricity bill. Ah, for heaven's sake. So you get so upset about it. So, la, 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 la. And then the, the answer, la, la, it's not my fault, dear. Not my fault. La, 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 la. Oh, but you tell me you're going to. La, 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 la. But I've been so busy. La, 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 la. So we're going to, we're going to act this through, okay? One time, one time. Here we go. La, 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 la. Oh, well done. I can see Penelope really doing a great, a great piece of work on that. Very good. So these are the sort of things we're doing, ladies and gentlemen, of singing together and using Zoom as a means of actually trying to still keep that, those three or four little streams of thought going through our sessions. And you know, very interestingly, we haven't missed one week since last March with the Parkinson's group and the numbers have grown and the reports coming back are saying how important this weekly session is for people 
with a condition like Parkinson's, of actually being able to see each other, hear each other from time to time, and then when we go to breakout rooms at the end, we can actually have a chat and things like that. So really, really, really important. So how good is that? Well, it's tradition. We build up a whole repertoire of songs, and it's tradition at the end of each uh, session uh, that I've ever done since 2010, we've always ended with five foot two eyes of blue as a Charleston. And this is where, you know, Penilla gets everybody dancing, either sitting on the seat if they can't dance, if they can't move uh, easily. So we can actually have all sorts of actions or else many, many occasions we've had people dancing together, recreating the Charleston, which is, you know, that wonderful. So it goes like this. A five foot two eyes of blue, but oh, what those five foot two do? Has anybody seen my gun? Turn up nose, turn down hose, never had another bow. Has anybody seen my gun? If you run into five foot two, come and I love and rings and all those things. I bet your life it isn't hers. A could she love? A could she coo? A could she could she could she coo? Has anybody seen my girl? And then we go. Ba 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 if you run to five foot two covered in fur, I don't mean rings and all those things. I bet your life beat isn't her. A good she love, a good she coo, a good she, good she, good she coo. Has anybody seen my a girl ba 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 ba? Has anybody seen my a girl ba 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 ba? Has anybody seen? Bravo! A round of applause for Camilla and everybody dancing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Grenville. That was absolutely wonderful. And I can see some very smiling, happy faces. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Um, I believe now there might be a little bit of time for any questions that anybody might like to ask. And I believe one of our lovely hosts, either Terry or Rosie, is going to lead us for any questions that you might have. Okay, so we have had a few questions. Um, so uh, I, I guess this is aimed more at you, um, Vanille. Do you enjoy dancing or teaching more? At the moment, dancing and teaching is one for me. And if I am passionate about what comes from within, if I can share that with all those that I teach, I am truly, truly happy. I don't think I can say it's one or the other because they are linked together and they come from inside and come out to you all. And that's my, that is my philosophy and, and my permanent wish to try and achieve on every session when I'm teaching. Thank you. Um, I guess this is, a, this is a question that both of you can answer. Um, do you have a favourite dance? Wow, I wonder. Grenville, have you got a favourite dance? Favourite dance? Well, I actually, you know, um, dancing has been always so important uh, in the history and the development of music. So I, I can think of, you know, one of our mutual friends, uh, 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 is, is a specialist early dancer. So I'm thinking, you know, if you see the minuet dance properly, that's magnificent. Or if you see a passacaglia danced, uh, then that's so, so very beautiful. 
Um, and those, those ancient Baroque and Renaissance dances are very, very lovely. But I guess, you know, the waltz takes some beating, doesn't it? It does. But just to add on that for you, Grenville, we both have a passion for historical dance because we share a very good mutual friend of mine, Nicola Gaines, and she is a historical dance artist. And it is a most wonderful thing to do Renaissance historical dance, um, and particularly the minuet. I will say, though, with seated dance and dance of Parkinson's, the salsa works really, really well because it has a wonderful internal rhythm and it's got a subtleness to it and you can really get lost in it with that movement. So for me, my work, I adore the waltz, but I love the salsa for some of my seated work. Right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so with um, most of what you're doing at the moment having to be done online, how does that change your relationship with your... Uh, for want of a better word, pupils. Does the rapport change? What What is the difference? Is that for me, Terry, or perhaps... I think, I think it's for both, actually. Why don't you ask her again? I'll follow you. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing that you miss is the, the audience. I mean, you know, the participation. Um, so that if we're, I, I see there's 60 people online at the moment. Well, if we're 60 of us in a room, then the impact would be quite, quite remarkable. That social cohesion, just like if you were at a football match or a rugby match, the, the impact of sound around you is quite extraordinary. So we are, you know, we are social animals, aren't we? And, um, you know, in, in evolutionary terms, I'm pretty well convinced that we actually, we ran out of time. I don't know if you, there's some, been some marvellous programmes on the television, but, you know, there's been some lovely animal programmes looking at baboons and the, the, the preening that goes on between baboons. So the sense of touch and feel and association is, is really important, but it's very difficult to get round everybody at the same time. So if you want to keep everybody together in your troop, you've got to try to get around everybody. Well, we run out of time. So we replace that with singing. Singing replace that. And the, all, the, new, all the, the, the endorphins that get released in the brain <clears throat> are the same endorphins that, when we're singing, are the same endorphins that are released when you preen <laughs> and when you touch each other or when you feed your baby, all those things are coming out of the head, out yeah, of the brain. So singing is that such an important thing and that social element, that's, that's one thing we miss, definitely. I think for me as well, coming from the dance side, you're in a studio, you're not two-dimensional, you're more than two-dimensional, you're three-dimensional, you're looking at the feeling from behind you to the sides of you, to the floor to you, to the, to the raised up to you. And when you are teaching on Zoom, it is very much, uh, the French term is en face. So I've had to slow down my work dramatically. To give you a fun um, example of how I found connecting and bringing dance to the screen on Zoom to bring everybody connected and together was actually for Burns Night. It was an interesting um, situation for me to actually teach the Gay Gordons when you're one person at home and you'd love to have your partner next to you and you're making patterns of three and you can't really turn around on Zoom because you've lost all the people on the screen from turning. So I had to do it on the diagonal with the use of a scarf that the entire Gay Gordons was done as using a scarf and on the diagonal because it's so important. Your eyes, your smile, your connection is really where you're trying to get. And the safety element obviously has to be put in place before. Thank you. Okay. Um, again, a question for both of you. What has been the most rewarding aspect of your career? Enville. Oh, well, just seeing, just <laughs> changing people's lives, undoubtedly, in whatever way, whether that's through teaching and, and the rewards that come there, or whether through secondhand in, in the sense of teaching teachers to teach. Uh, so change people's lives. And then changing people's lives in something like working with people with Parkinson's, just seeing the extraordinary impact that music and 
uh, the arts can have for for us all. And it, I think it's you know it's a, it's an absolute tragedy in our country that the arts are so marginalised. You know, I mean, we we are. We are in a terrible position at the moment, performing musicians, performing dancers, performing actors, uh, having no work at all and no place to perform. It really is. So, yeah, we've got a lot to do to keep on changing people's lives. So that, for me, that's the, the greatest pleasure. Mm -hmm. Lovely. I think for me is, if I can share a sparkle that comes from me and I can gift that to anyone who comes into the studio and would like to share time together. And actually, what I feel is so special is when people come together and you share a beautiful art form of dance. When you see everyone leave the studio, they're taller, they're lighter, but most of all, they are brighter. And I have noticed, particularly with Dancing with Parkinson's, we have a lot of time before we start teaching to connect and speak together. And the same after our sessions, it's a good time for the community to also bring themselves together, usually when we are able to be in the studio over tea and cakes and biscuits, etc. But what I have really noticed is they come in feeling in some form that they feel they might want to just sit quietly they might want to express a lot. Um, so you are there very much for them. Once they have finished the dance session, and I've noticed this with the singing sessions, with singing to beat Parkinson's as well, is they leave taller, they have more mobility, the rhythm of the music is still in their bodies, and believe it or not, if they arrived with a walking stick, guess what? They've forgotten it and they've gone home. So it's amazing. And the way that music can absolutely drive them forward with such confidence. And I think in everything in life, if we can sow a little seed of confidence, all will be well. Thank you. Okay, final question uh, aimed at uh, Grenville. Um, given the problems that choirs have had in coming together during COVID, um, it has been a huge frustration not being able to hear another one sing another person singing. Movement obviously works um, over um, this kind of medium, but how does singing? I mean, we kind of had a demonstration there where you couldn't hear the people singing in the background. No, it's a great frustration because the platform doesn't allow more than one voice to uh, be effective at any time so harmony the very thing that we just yeah. well, the, as the metaphor for a, a successful society is harmony to make harmony the thing that we all want to do when we come together to sing is actually very difficult so the only way you can you can overcome that is to actually do multi-track recording as you've seen lots of examples i'm sure of that um, but you have to be a technical wizard to be able to, to do that, you know. So anyway, it's, um, but that is, yeah, it's, it is very, very difficult. Uh, 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 alongside all other music making uh, with instruments, it's, it's not possible at the moment. I'm sure this time next year, there probably will be a platform that will allow us to do it. But of course, your internet speed and all those things are going to be the problematic. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much both. I'm going to hand over to Janie now. Okay. And now I just say thank you again and good night to everybody. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Big kisses. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye.